Hello everyone, and welcome to my bold and beautiful official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Sheila's resurrection causes Eric, Donna, Brooke, and Ridge at the Forester estate to cry. Zendi is in the building, and Brooke receives a text telling her that she needs to leave. She should keep an eye on Sheila since Ridge says, we don't know what she's going to do. Donna and Eric ask Ridge to clarify about Sheila after Brooke departs. Does the name Janet Weber signify anything to you? Ridge queries. He tells him that Sugar resembles Sheila identically, that Finn and Deacon saved Sheila, and that Finn wants Sugar to be a member of his family. Eric is certain that he still remembers Sheila's identity. Steffi told Ridge that Finn is referring to her as a hero. Except for Finn, everyone knows she would say anything to be close to him. Ridge said he is not comfortable with his daughter having to issue an ultimatum. I heard about Sheila, Luna says to RJ as they enter the design office at Forrester. How are you doing? According to RJ, he's not. She spent years torturing our family. The fact that she was finally gone from our lives felt good. He wants to know how Steffi is doing. Luna gives a sigh. She detests the distance that separates them. You are missed. RJ, I truly do miss you. RJ is also missing her. Luna supposes he needs more time. God, I wrecked everything, she groans. He tells her it's not his fault. This wasn't any of your fault. Luna is concerned about his gaze at her. She remembers how first terrified she was that it might be too wonderful to be true. Her concerns vanished when he assured her he loved her and nothing could ever change that. RJ needs time to come to terms with what has transpired, but he still loves her. Luna despises herself for causing him pain. She ought to have informed him earlier. That evening, I destroyed our relationship. The evening I had with Zende. Zend and Carter talk about Sheila's unbelievable doppelganger story in the main office. Carter inquires about the status of his plans. Zend concedes he has trouble focusing. Carter yells that he has to clear his brain. He is aware that the evening he spent with Luna still causes him pain. He keeps thinking about her all the time. Zend is aware of his suffering. According to Carter, Zend was an expert at what he was doing. That's beyond him how he could have felt that was Oak. She has a crush on your cousin. He ought to stop falling for someone who isn't available. Carter is speaking from experience. He has also made blunders. He nearly ruined everything that matters to him, and he doesn't want Zen to experience that. He doesn't tell Ridge, which Zen appreciates. When Brooke enters, she requests to talk with Zen alone. Carter is aware, according to Zend, and presumably so are you. How you slept with Luna and stabbed my son in the back, rages Brooke. Carter agrees to go when Brooke urges him to. Zend admits to Brooke that what he did was improper. What he did could not be described by what she says is incorrect. Zend says that Luna was in his bed when he returned from the party. Brooke cries out, Oh my God, it was Luna not you, who was poisoned. You were well aware of what was happening. She questions how he could harm his relative in this way. He was aware of his love for Luna. He has deceived both his family and his cousin. It wasn't proper for you to sleep with Luna. Zendi breaks down in tears. While Eric is on the phone with Lauren Fenmore at the Forrester estate. Ridge tells Donna that he's not sure what to do about Finn. Sheila Carter is not dead, he laments. Donna then inquires as to Lauren's reaction to the news. Eric claims she's shocked. Ridge claims that they're all stunned. This continues to occur. Sheila's misdeeds are never paid for. Though Eric believes Finn is susceptible to Sheila, he made the correct decision. Ridge argues that he was wrong to invite Steffi to become a part of their life. He groans and says, Sheila Carter is back so they better exercise caution. RJ in the design office is aware that Luna was not at blame for this. Luna bemoans the fact that it destroyed not just their relationship, but also his and Zend's. RJ blows up, 
saying he doesn't give a damn about Zend. It was never right for him to touch her. He understood how much he cared for her since he was his family. Their relationship will never return to its previous state. Luna claims that after this incident, he has changed. She is devastated that the carefree boyish aspect she once loved is no longer there. Brooke wonders what Zend's mother would make of his conduct in the main office. She believes Zend and need to travel to Forrester International and depart. No, Forrester Antarctica, don't do that. Zend contends that he deserves to be there. Brooke believes he tossed it aside. Despite Luna writing RJ's arm to the party, he slept with her. She claims that because of the type of man he is, RJ requested her not to inform his father. The type of man I believed you to be, Zendi wails. Zendi didn't respect Luna or her son, Brooke cries. Even though he knew they were in love, he nevertheless sprang for her without pausing to find out why she was there. Zendi screams, I'm so sorry. I'm embarrassed by all that has occurred. He maintains that everything was a huge misunderstanding. However, they can move past everything. There won't be any more developments, I swear to you. Brooks and bed and breakfast. Luna informs RJ in the design office that their relationship's innocent sweetness is gone forever. His visage conveys anguish and heartbreak to her. I truly apologize. RJ asserts that Zendi is to blame, not her. I adore you a lot, she sobs. She is pardoned by RJ for delaying notifying him about what transpired. Let's proceed. She is all he needs. They give hugs. RJ cuddles up to her. He truly meant it when he told her he loved her. He refuses to let anything or anybody to stand in their way. They give one other a passionate kiss. RJ has to go because of a meeting. After they reaffirm their love, he leaves. Luna sits at the desk, grinning, after being by herself. She uses the laptop, then all of a sudden she had to vomit into the trash can. Am I pregnant? She gasped, holding her tummy. He's falling for someone unavailable and needs to shut that down. Carter's made mistakes too and is speaking from experience. He almost destroyed everything he cares about and doesn't want that for Zend. Zend thanks him for not telling Ridge. Brooke comes in and wants to speak to Zend alone. Zend says Carter knows, and apparently you do too. Brooke fumes, how you slept with Luna and stabbed my son in the back. Brooke asks Carter to leave, and he does. Zendi tells Brooke he knows what he did was wrong. She says wrong doesn't begin to describe what he did. Zend explains that when he came back from the party, Luna was in his bed. Brooke exclaims, my god. Luna was the one who was drugged, not you. You knew exactly what was going on. She wonders how he could do this to his cousin. He knew how much he loved Luna. He's betrayed his cousin and his family. You had no right sleeping with Luna. Zenda tears up. At the Forester Mansion, Rich tells Donna that he doesn't know what to do about Finn as Eric carries on a phone conversation with Lauren Fenmore. Sheila Carter is alive, he complains. After, Donna asks how Lauren took the news. Eric says she's in shock. Rich says they're all in shock. This keeps happening. Sheila never has to pay for her crimes. Eric feels Finn is vulnerable to Sheila, but he made the right choice. Ridge maintains he shouldn't have asked Steffi to let her into their lives. He grunts that they have to be careful because Sheila Carter is back. In the design office, Archie knows this wasn't Luna's fault. Luna complains that it didn't only ruin their relationship, but his and Zendi's. RJ explodes that he doesn't care about Zend. He never should have touched her. He's his family and knew how much he cared about her. It will never go back to how it was between them. Luna says there's been a shift in him since this happened. The fun boyish quality she fell in love with is gone now, and it breaks her heart. In the main office, Brooke wonders what Zend's mother would think of his actions. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.